Okay, welcome to our Kickstart event in partnership with Stockport Council, Job Centre Plus, The Growth Company and Stockport Homes, uh, where we have an expert panel who are here to advise employers and potential Kickstarters about the Government Max scheme. This session is designed to give attendees a chance to learn more about the Kickstart scheme, including latest updates and the benefits, how to apply directly, what is required, how to apply via the Stockport Growth Company gateway and the benefits of doing so. And we'll also look at um, Stockport Homes, uh, who will explain how the Kickstart scheme has benefited and worked for them in practice. Uh, and we can discuss support available to businesses with new job creation, skills development, including apprenticeships, trainingships and jobs match. Topics that we're going to look at are, as I say, the overview of the current labour market statistics and the importance of Kickstart in tackling youth unemployment. Uh, and we've Delighted to welcome here uh, Richard Mortimer from Stockport Council, who is going to talk us through just that. So, Richard, over to you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I'm uh, just going to take you through quickly, sort of, uh, some statistics and data around unemployment rates, and uh, a few prompts about um, some of the the kind of job options and availability that we know from the from the data that we've got. Uh, so, um, if you want to jump in with any questions, please do so. Okay, so we'll start here, uh, basically, with where uh, are we with unemployment at the moment? Um, so this is uh, some data around Stockport's claimant data, which is a proxy for unemployment that we use. And this is data from April this year. So you'll see there, the important thing is that Stockport's claimant rate is at 5.9%. And in terms of actual numbers of people, that represents 10,405 people. Month on month change was about minus 3%, which is a positive sign. It's been uh, improving slightly over the last couple of months as we've started to reopen the economy. Um, but you'll see the year on year change there is 18.6%. So that's quite a sizable change, understandably, through the pandemic and the impact that that's had. Those comparative figures there for Greater Manchester the northwest England and the United Kingdom are just to demonstrate that we're not necessarily you know wildly out of kilter with those things so there's not some kind of bizarre local effect going on it seems to be that Stockport uh, is kind of in line with the the way things are going across the country and particularly in, in GM and the region so this next slide is just to illustrate the difference about, you remember it was about 18% uh, in terms of year on year change. But when we look at the difference from pre-pandemic times in February 2020, the change is actually 98.8%, which is very stark compared to that lower figure. There's uh, the figures there across the GM uh, local authorities. And you'll see that again, we're not particularly wildly out of kilter on that. Interestingly, the way the maths works on this, the um, the lower numbers tend to be for areas that had a higher level of unemployment uh, before the, the effects of the pandemic started to come in. Uh, and so the, the movement and the shifts are greater for the likes of Trafford um, and Manchester and Stockport for that reason, basically. Um, so those figures, again, you can see in terms of the actual whole numbers uh, are quite stark in terms of the number of people we're talking about who are being affected by unemployment. Um, so this chart is just to show you in Stockport, we have some priority areas uh, that are areas that experience much higher levels of disadvantage across a range of, of indicators and multiple issues. Um, and the thing about these areas is that it can be much more of a challenge to get into work and out of unemployment uh, just because of the range of issues and features that are going on there. So you can see here in terms of the, the numbers uh, in Offerton, 11.7% rather than that sort of borough average of around 5.8% uh, is far more stark. The whole numbers aren't necessarily massive, but the thing to bear in mind here is that we know because of the challenges and the barriers that are presented to people from these communities, they can be unemployed for much longer periods of time because of how difficult they find it to get back into work and into the labour market. So if we now move on to a focus around youth unemployment, which is really the focus for Kickstart and, and the reason why we're here this afternoon, um, you'll, you'll see the difference is actually quite... Uh, quite marked um so the stockport the I'm working age i'm just sorry have we got 
Okay. Uh, so the, the difference uh, you'll see for the, the working age population, age 16 to 64 at 5.9% compared to the 18 to 24 rate at 10.6%. And that number is actually 2,020 people. And if you think back to that earlier slide where we had just over 10,000 people in the general population, uh, 16 to 64, you can see that about a fifth of our unemployed people are these youngsters aged 18 to 24. And that's a real cause for concern in terms of how differentially impacted they are around this issue. Again, just showing you the comparisons across the, the sort of region uh, and Greater Manchester in the UK we're not out of kilter necessarily. So this issue for young people and um, the fact that they're much more likely to be unemployed and are unemployed at higher rates is a national feature, as you can see. So in terms of what the impact of that is for, for young people, um, it really is a, a problem for employers, educators, and our young people. Um, unemployment when you're young is linked to long-term reductions in wages, so you're less likely to earn at higher levels across your career and your working life. Um, it can lead to increased chances of subsequent periods of unemployment, so people kind of cycle in and out of work and go round and round various schemes and loops to help them get back into work. And there's also a link with poorer health outcomes. And just going back to those, those stats about those deprived areas, there's quite a stark statistic in Stockport that if you're an adult male living in Brinnington, you're likely to die 10 years earlier than an adult male living in Bramall. Uh, and some of that will certainly be related to what your work history has been like. High levels of youth unemployment also have wider social and economic costs. So the cost of youth employment over the next decade has been estimated at 28 billion. So in terms of the costs of services and support uh, and the, the strain that puts on the system and where our money goes as taxpayers, it's a significant issue. Um, and then, you know, a, a key one, I think, for businesses is that a generation of young people lost to unemployment means that there isn't an adequate talent pool for the needs of our businesses as the economy recovers. So that's a huge waste of talent and resource, really, in terms of young people who could be and should be in work. So in terms of causes of youth unemployment, and these range of factors really come in, uh, I'll leave you to, to read those. I think the slides are going to be circulated to you all after the presentation. But what I'm really interested in focusing on here is um, the fact that employers prefer to work with experienced staff seems to be a suggestion, not necessarily the case for all people or all employers. Uh, and the fact that employers have certain perceptions of young people and what their motivation and reliability might be like, for example. So these are features uh, that seem to be causing youth unemployment and again as you'll hear uh, later in this afternoon's set of presentations kickstart is a way for us to start to uh, provide some redress to that just in terms of where employment opportunities are in gm uh, this data is from about february this year uh, and what's quite interesting is it shows a set of um, sectors which are kind of categorized on this slide certainly as declining or slow growth sectors then there's some around moderate growth and there's some around high growth. So I'm not sure uh, necessarily that declining or slow growth sectors um, are to do with the fact that, for example, you can't get enough people to grow your business rapidly enough, which could be an issue. Or is it the case that because those sectors aren't growing rapidly enough, there's not a lot of employment in them? I think it's probably a mix of the two, to be honest. But the main thing is that we shouldn't really be discounting opportunities in any of these sectors at all. Uh, clearly in Stockport, we've got very large uh, opportunities around hospitality, care, but we've also got financial and professional services and digital businesses, growing green economy, etc. So in terms of the opportunities that could be available for kickstart placements, all of this is in scope for us, I think, regardless of these categorizations and definitions about the potential for growth. Just a bit more data about where uh, employment opportunities in GMR are in terms of top three jobs in Stockport, in terms of numbers, nursing, teaching assistants and office admin assistants uh, were quite significant in terms of being the top three opportunities. But when you look across that GM footprint and the mix of jobs that are available there, we know that we've got good transport links and an opportunity to be quite mobile. So there's an opportunity for young people to move out across the borough. They tend to be less likely to do so than older workers. So again, Kickstart is a way of supporting young people who may not necessarily be able to take as much advantage of these opportunities as uh, some of the older workforce can. 
So in, in terms of what we can do, uh, we could increase employer support uh, to encourage them to take on young people. Um, we could help employers to recognize the value of skills and behaviors in young people, as well as academic criteria. So we did some interesting work in Stockport a few years ago now in the hospitality sector uh, with the Devere group. And they were very interested uh, in what they uh, referred to as attitude and aptitude rather than just academic skills and qualifications. So if young people came to them and showed the right kind of motivation and, and sort of approach to things, they were willing to take them on and give them a chance uh, and possibly retrofit qualifications to them while they learned in work. Uh, and that was a really uh, interesting eye-opener for me in terms of an approach which worked really well for getting some really good quality people in who otherwise may have been missed through a very crude recruitment and selection filter based purely on academic qualifications. Other things we could do, we can help young people to value uh, work of all entry levels. So raising aspirations is important. So if you remember that mix of job opportunities in digital sector and legal and very high tech end things, great you know we want people to aspire to that kind of thing but there's also a lot of value in entry-level work that they can achieve and, and get into and the kickstart scheme again is a good pathway into that as you'll hear so in terms of the the kickstart scheme it provides funding to employers to create jobs for 16 to 24 year olds who are on universal credit um, so You'll hear a lot more about this later in the, in the other presentations that give you much more detail. But I think what we're trying to say here is that in terms of that range of, of issues and features that we've just looked at in terms of high levels of youth unemployment, employers needing to restart their businesses and find good talent uh, and get the skills in their business to thrive and to grow and to be very productive, this is a really good opportunity. I think to start to build a foundation and entry level of businesses to get over some of those workforce issues that they face. Um, and finally, the last thing I'd like to say is um, I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of you will be aware of the One Stop Port campaign and probably the, the kind of words build back better that have been said a lot through the, the pandemic uh, and the way that we want to approach this now in terms of coming out of a situation where we've hopefully kind of re-engaged and reconnected with a sense of community and how important it is that we kind of look out for each other and help each other out. So I think as businesses uh, across Stockport, there's a huge opportunity for you uh, to be part of uh, offering kickstart placements for young people and giving them a chance to achieve, you know, a future that is built on long-term sustainable work because they've had a really good experience as they've started out on that journey. And that's it from me. Thanks very much. Nick Hill from uh, Stockport Council, who's just going to talk about the Stockport Council's partnership with the growth company as a gateway provider. So over to you, Nick. Thanks, Helen. Um, yeah, as Helen said, my, my bit's very brief. There's no slides for me because I'll be handing over to my colleague Fern pretty, pretty quickly. So I just kind of wanted to introduce a little bit about um, how the council's got working in partnership with um, the growth company on, on, on Kickstart. So when Kickstart was launched by the government, um, at the time of the launch, it was it was introduced. It was said that basically at the time you could employers could only make direct applications for, for Kickstart to the DWP if they had at least 30 placements. And if you had less than 30, you could work in partnership with a gateway organization 
who so which was basically an opportunity for you know for smaller businesses or, or even large businesses with only a, with a smaller number of, of opportunities to, to come together. And then these gateway organisations could, could then submit the applications to DWP, make sure the due diligence is done, that they're, they're added value jobs, look at the training support the young people might need, etc. Um, so as a local authority, you probably obviously picked up from Richard's presentation earlier about how important it is for us as a local authority around tackling issues of youth unemployment and, and what we can do to support that. So we were very keen to try and ensure that for Stockport employers, that there was a there was a Stockport based gateway that they could access and they could really utilize um, to put forward opportunities for kickstarts. So they could start to offer opportunities for young people if they didn't have you know that significant number of 30. And, and, and you know, for most employers across the country, that's going to be the case. Most employers are going to have, be able to do you know one or two kickstart opportunities, but you know, not going to have that big number. Um, so we look we looked at the opportunities and then we we had an opportunity to work jointly in partnership with the growth company on this. We were, we were approached by us who were wanting to develop their gateway opportunity across Greater Manchester anyway, but we were able to, to badge up a, a local, local Stockport gateway um, uh, for, for our local employers, basically. So we could actually say, look, this is the Stockport gateway. If you're a Stockport-based employer, you can get on board with Kickstart via this way. This is the, you know, a trusted route and there's, there's lots of support for you as employers to, you know, to, to get the applications in, to access additional training support for the young people and to try and make it as, as smooth as possible. Um, I think it's, it's going well. We've got you know, a number of employers have been on board with that, with that opportunity now. Um, I think we'd like to you know, get as many more on board as possible and we're really keen to sort of broaden the, the message about Kickstart as much as possible, hence why we've got this, this webinar on today. Um, there's probably not a lot more um, I need to say on that, really, other than to say, you know, give a bit of background as to how the council's got involved in our, in our relationship there with the, with the Grove Company. So I'm literally just going to sort of hand over now to um, my colleague Fern Goddard from the Grove Company. And Fern will, will talk a bit more about um, the, get, the Grove Company and their role as a gateway um, in, in the Kickstart scheme and, and how they're providing that support to employers going forward. So, yep, yeah, over to Fern. Hi everybody, I hope you're all right. I'm hoping my presentation um, works fine um, and you can all hear me. So we'll have a go. If not, someone shout at me and tell me so. Um, I'm Fern Goddard. I am Head of Sales for the Growth Company Employment. And like Nick said, I'm here today to speak to you about our offer as a gateway. So I'm just going to quickly share my um, screen with you. Um, share. Is it working? Can you see? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Good start. That's what we like to hear. Um, so um, just as a little bit of an overview, because um, obviously Ian and Karen touched upon um, the scheme itself. But um, one of the questions that we get an awful lot is, um, is my business eligible to apply for a kickstart placement? Um, so um, just as a bit of an overview, so employers from all industries and across the private, public and voluntary sectors are eligible to apply for the kickstart scheme, okay? Um, so, you know, great opportunity for organisations from across the sectors, various sizes, um, and, you know, we can talk to you about that. Kickstart applications are open to any organisations of all sizes. The only exception at the moment is sole traders. That is under review from the DWP, but unfortunately, as a gateway, we're not able to represent sole traders. Businesses must be able to demonstrate that a kickstart placement and new jobs and not replace existing or planned vacancies or cause existing employees or contract to lose or reduce their employment. So what that means is, let's say you've recently made redundancies and um, unfortunately you wouldn't be able to replace them um, with a kickstart placement. That's not what this scheme is about, but we will talk to you and guide you through that. You must be able to provide a young person with a personal development to assist their future employment and becoming more employable. And you can deliver that yourself. So loads of organisations have decided to do that. But there's some great organisations out there, great placement hosts, but just aren't in a situation where they could offer that training. And that can be delivered externally. And I'll move on to that shortly. Um, your business also needs to be able to demonstrate that you're established, reputable and financially solvent. The reason for that is the DWP will undertake spotlight checks to assess this. So um, 
just to kind of give you an overview and um, so as Nick mentioned earlier we are a gateway we are a national gateway and we are working with lots of different organizations so since the scheme started which was um, late last year we have applied for 777 placements um, on behalf of 267 employers nationally just to give you the scope um, you know massive massive numbers um, in relation to the applications that we have made to the DWP we've got a 90% success rate on employer applications made. Now, I'm not going to blow my own trumpet, but of course I am. That's what I'm here to do. Um, but that is um, a massive improvement on a lot of other gateways and employers um, applying direct. We know our stuff and we know what we're doing. Um, so far, we've had 292 kickstart placements that have been advertised across job centres uh, nationally, and we've got 116 people that have started placements and we've got a further 28 under offer, which is great. So what do we do as a gateway? So why use a gateway rather than making that application yourself? So what we do is we work with you to fully understand your business and your organisation. We offer you guidance, support and develop an understanding of what it is like to host a kickstart placement. Loads of organisations have got the best intentions, but we work with you and our bread and butter is working with young people and people and um, unskilled workers. So we will guide you about what it's actually like to host the Kickstart placement. We will apply for a Kickstart placement grant on behalf of your business. So again, the application is quite lengthy and complex, but we will work with you um, to ensure that that application is robust and we will put it in on your behalf. And like I said, we've got a 90% conversion rate on the applications we've made. We will also provide wraparound support for both you, uh, the business and the young person throughout the six month placement. And that is really important to us. This isn't just about putting people into placement. This is about supporting you throughout the process. We don't have to do that as a gateway. We choose to do that because that is the right thing to do for the young people in your, your business. And we're also able to provide personal development training to the young person. So as I mentioned on the slide before, that is an expectation of the employers, but we are able to take that burden off you. And how we do that is, um, Ian mentioned, and I don't know whether you quite um, caught it because I know he had a bad light. With each young person, there is a £1,500 grant that is associated to that that person what we look to do is we look to retain 500 pounds of that 1500 pounds to deliver that personal development training and i'll move on to that in a moment so in relation to wraparound support to you as a business to the employer what that looks like from us is you will get a dedicated business advisor and the lovely joanne kane one of our business advisors is on the call with me today and she looks after anything stop poor. okay and what that means is you will get guided application support on a one-to-one -one basis and that will be able to answer any queries that you have and um, you know if there's anything that you need explaining a little bit more you know joe would be the dedicated person that would work with you we will offer you assistance in building the role profile of kickstart placements. Now, you might think, well, that's just a job um, job um, vacancy template. It's not that easy um, because that is what will appeal to young people and make the people apply. And it will also give the indication to the DWP whether these placements are correct. We'll give you hints and tips on how to make that an appealing, um, an appealing advertisement um, and how to sing to the young people's ears. We'll provide you with marketing guidance and resource packs because once these vacancies have gone live, what we'd really like you to do as an organisation is to self-promote the placements as well. This is a massive achievement for your organisation and you want to be singing that you are supporting the scheme and the young, per young people in your area. We'll also undertake activity with the DWP on behalf of your organisation to promote kickstart placements available. And that's for candidate attraction purposes. So we do monthly meet the gateways with job coaches across Greater Manchester to talk about all the great opportunities that we've had available and to drive them applications. We will also act as a DWP liaison and for that's for any additional requests. So, for example, some organisations are wanting to host their own webinars and to really get to grips with the people that might be interested in the roles. And then also we will attend marketplaces and book spaces on marketplaces where you can go and attend to meet young people and job coaches yourselves. And um, we will provide guidance to a business about onboarding a young person. So that's super, super important. Um, and it might not be something that you've done be before. So we're here to help. 
We will also give you um, access to monthly reviews and contact with a dedicated BA, so Joe, who's on the phone. And it's not just that monthly contact, she's always at the end of an email, or at the end of the phone, should you need have any queries or concerns. And then also what we're really keen to understand is your feedback as an employer. So at the end of the placement, you will receive a survey which we'll ask you to complete so we can compile and look at our services to you as an employer. And then in relation to the uh, wraparound support for the young person. So again, this is about us going above and beyond for them young people. What that looks like is, is that that young person will get a dedicated IAG worker to work with them and provide one to one monthly support reviews to them. Or it could be that it's that young person receives 26 weekly sessions virtually delivered by uh, delivering the personal development and employability program and I mentioned earlier on um, in the slides in relation to that PDP training and you outsourcing it and that's what we that's what that outsourcing is it is um, weekly interventions by a trainer all young people will get access to the GC careers online learning portal so that is a really good online portal where they can go in and do some um, some learning and everything has got a clear audit trail for anything they've accessed or undertaken and it's certificated as well because there's nothing more rewarding than a young person taking the time to undertake learning and have something to show for it. We have a dedicated support telephone hotline for the young person, so that um, offers safeguarding support or any assistance that they may need. And again, when a young person moves into the world of work, that is quite a challenging time and not all the people have the support mechanisms in place within their family circumstances to get advice and guidance. Well, that's why we are there to offer that support to the young person. The young person will also get a kickstart welcome pack, which will include some asks of them and it's some asks of you as well as an employer. Um, and it will give them guidance about stepping into the world of work and what to look out for and the questions to ask. They will also get end of placement support. So in an ideal world, all of these young people will move into employment within organisations, but that's not just the, ca not the case. And not all organisations are going to be in the situation where they can offer that next steps. We have put full support in that will, um, that will offer next steps. So things like apprenticeships, traineeships, further skills or potentially looking back into education and also looking for further employment with them. And then also, like with the employers, we really want to understand that young person's journey and how they felt it's gone. So that young person will also receive a survey where we will ask them to complete um, and return so we can have lessons learned as well. Now, as Nick mentioned earlier, we are in partnership with Stockport Council um, and it's been a really, really great partnership. We've got a website that is on the screen. So if and if you are interested and you want to find out more, please visit the website. And um, there is an expression of interest page on there where you can complete um, and details will get fired through to us and the lovely Joe Kane will be in contact with you to discuss in more detail. The other option is, is you can email us if you've got any inquiries or would just like an informal discussion and just to find out more. Or you can always call us um, on um, the telephone number below. Um, so hopefully um, I've not talked too much and I've been quite clear um, with everybody. Um, however, if you do have any questions or queries, um, please feel free to, oh, I've, um, for some reason I've got to, won't let me stop sharing my screen. Um, so if you've got any questions or queries, please feel free to reach out to us um, by the means that we're set. And, and if you've got any questions at the end, please ask me as well. Okay, thank you. So, um, and now um, having learned all about the Kickstart scheme, we're gonna hear about somebody who's actually put it into practice um, at Stockport Homes Group. So can I uh, ask Amanda to take, take on, and as I say, just talk to us about the benefits of taking on, a, a, of joining the Kickstart scheme. Excellent. Okay, no. So um, my name is Amanda Ward. I'm from Stockport Homes and I was asked to come and talk to you today about our experiences with uh, the Kickstart programme, but also as well kind of some of the things that um, we've thought about as an organisation and also as well some of the career development opportunities that have uh, that will hopefully come through from uh, from our meeting all of these wonderful young people. Um, so in relation to the kickstart journey so far so it's been very interesting and as uh, as nick and ian sort of like talked about it was it was very much uh, created quite quickly sort of like in the midsection of la last year and then sort of really started to to get the ball rolling around sort of like november december time um 
So one of the things that we really started to think about as an organization were what were the benefits? So there's those basic benefits to any kind of recruitment in relation to increasing productivity and morale and staff retention. But also as well, one of the things that we've realized and one of the things that probably you guys need to think about in relation to whether or not you recruit a Kickstarter is, you know, it has been difficult during this period of, of the pandemic. So it is an amazing opportunity to bring kind of those fresh ideas and also uh, new productivity into your organizations and, and to take on board a, a new young person. Um, one of the things that we looked at, one of the things that we thought about when we were um, looking at what placements we could start was identifying innovative opportunities. So the temptation may be, and, and I think Fern touched on this beautifully, you know, it, the temptation is probably to just cover core functions, but actually there's probably an amazing opportunity on the back of, of COVID and different things like that where you can look at maybe growth areas within your business. And we looked at potential projects and different things that we talked about doing for a long period of time. But it, it you know, it would require additional staff or maybe, a, you know, sort of like a, a sort of like an increase in the budget of a certain area of the business. And those things that have sometimes been prohibitive, we've been able to, to kind of really look at uh, developing since we've, we've really started to uh, embrace Kickstart. And also as well, one of the things that, that we looked at in relation to the benefits for us was not just the promotion opportunities within the business in relation to somebody can move up and you've got a Kickstarter that come in and could that could be a substantive post if, if things go well, but also as well, developing your future leaders. So you, if you have um, a person within your organization who is looking to progress, looking to make that step up, they can be the person who mentors that Kickstarter. They can, they can really sort of like support and engage that young person. So when we looked at it, as, as an organization as Stockport Homes, it didn't just sit firmly with our values around having our workforce reflect our community. And also as well, the, the real understanding that we had of everything that Richard was saying about, you know, young people being significantly affected by the pandemic and, and it being the right thing to do. But also as well, for a, as a business, this really worked as an idea. So in relation to recruiting your Kickstarter, all the things that kind of like Ian touched on in relation to kind of like those funding considerations. So you do get a six month fully funded placement at 25 hours, uh, minimum wage and contributions. Um, if you are a member of the Living Wage Foundation and if your organization is a living wage uh, organization, there is an expectation to uplift uh, to living wage. Uh, that was some of the advice that we had as an organization. So that was really, uh, really useful. Uh, the employment support element, so um, sort of building those uh, sustainable recruitment pathways, very much what firm was talking about in relation to developing that wraparound support and that package that can be offered to the young person so that they can really, really develop within their role. Um, in relation to what, what firm was saying actually as well, um, with recruitment, I would just say keep it simple. So one of the things that we really, really learned was um, the young people are arriving. This is quite often their very first job. It's the first thing that they've ever done. You've got the DWP will be given your role description. They will attempt to then match the young person to the role description, which is usually, and we know this, don't we, as employers, we write a set of skills and, and requirements that we want for the role. I would advise you to think more behaviors. So if you are uh, recruiting to a customer service role, you're probably not going to be asking for customer service skills. You're going to be asking, does somebody like meeting people? Are they chatty? Are they polite? Are, you know, you, you're looking for those kinds of behaviours as, as opposed to that, an actual skill set list that we would probably as recruiters look for ordinarily with, you know, with, with our uh, job advertisements. And then I would say one of our biggest pieces of, of learning and, and advice probably would be communication is absolutely key to the success of this. Communication with your gateways, communication with the managers who will be uh, hosting the Kickstart placements, communications with the DWP, the Kickstarters themselves, and also as well uh, the mentors. It really is, it, you need good quality, strong communication pathways to, to have a, a lovely successful Kickstart outcome. So in relation to Stockport Homes and Kickstart in practice and our areas of uh, focus and kind of like how we did it, um, the first thing we did was we, um, we really did look uh, quite holistically across all elements of our business. 
where we wanted to grow. So kind of like, remember what I was saying before about sort of like, were there potential projects or different things that we'd not been able to do before? Did we have to look creatively at different areas of the business? And we also as well looked at roles that would previously be uh, apprenticeship roles. And so we looked at uh, whether or not they could be converted to um, a kickstart into an apprenticeship, hopefully, because don't forget, as an organization, this is an amazing opportunity. You've got the young person for six months before they'd start their apprenticeship. So you get to meet and feel what they're like and they get a good fit for you. And it's a really, really sort of like a, an excellent opportunity. We looked at what we call our scale three and our scale four jobs. So there are certain pay scales that we would class as entry level jobs. Um, and we look to convert quite a few of those to kickstart roles. And we also as well looked at just areas of the business where we know that somebody could come in, gain some amazing experience, probably wouldn't progress to an actual job, but would be an amazing experience. So as Fern says, you then, well, we applied to our gateway. We are part of uh, Greater Manchester Housing Providers uh, Gateway uh, the, under the Athena Group. We applied to them and uh, we had our spotlight checks were completed by the DWP and uh, all of that came back and phew, all was, all was good with the business and we were able to, to progress to recruitment. And then what came after that was very much about managing the process. So if you remember what I said previously about communication being key, it absolutely is. So if you think about it for us as an organization, we'd whipped up this wonderful frenzy of excitement with all of our managers who wanted to host a kickstart placement and they were imagining they were going to start tomorrow. And so we needed to have those conversations with the DWP, make sure that we understood the timeframes, make sure that we understood uh, how it was gonna work with HR, how we were gonna onboard people, uh, the conversations as well with the young people themselves, because if you've got a little bit of a lag between kind of your recruitment and the start date you do want to keep in those conversations with uh with your young person and make sure that they still know that they're wanted uh so for us what we did we often invited people in and they got to shadow for a day which was really great so they knew that you know in particular some of our roles were waiting on dbs checks and things so they do take a while so it, it was a really good way to kind of handhold and, and support the young people and the manager through that process to know that that it was still all ongoing uh, so one of the pieces of advice I would give anybody is identify a coordinator for this task, especially if you're recruiting a few roles, it would be ideal for you to have somebody within your organization who is in communication with the DWP, potentially your gateway, your young people who are coming in and your managers as well to set those expectations. Um, in, return, in relation to recruiting, how we did that was uh, we worked really closely with the DWP, as Fern's explaining. We talked to them about our job roles. We talked very specifically about behaviours that we were looking for rather than a skill set, because we were very much expecting young people to, to sort of like be very much fresh to, to the world of work and probably not have those skills. So uh, we then completed assessment centres where the young people were given an opportunity to uh, meet the manager, hear about the job, hear about our, our, our values and our ethos and, and sort of like our, our working practice and also what's on offer if you were successful in, in uh, securing the role. And then what we did was we would have um, a task based situation. So the young people would do um, sort of like engage in a task, whether that was together um, or, or separately, depending on the job role. So some of our jobs, we looked at communication skills as being the base of the task. Others were problem solving, depending on where the job was within the business and what was appropriate. And then from that, the manager then would select. We usually met about 10 young people at the assessment centers. And their manager then would select four to take through to a traditional formal interview. So we did all of this because we were doing it at the early part of this year. We did all of this virtually. So it was uh, it was very interesting. And we supported and the DWP were brilliant in supporting young people to access tech to be able to engage. So it uh, it really can, even if uh, even if worst comes to the worst and we all go into another God forbid. But if we all went into another lockdown, there is a way to, to kind of do this virtually. Um, so then uh, managers took their young people through to interviews and then selected uh, the, the ones that they wanted for the job. We then did a completely regular onboarding uh, situation like we would do with any other member of staff. 
if you think about it, your Kickstarter is supposed to have the experience anybody else would have in a normal job. It's supposed to feel like, you know, it's not just a, play, a paid placement by the government. This is actually a, your opportunity, you come into work. So we did our induction, our training, our one-to-ones, our coaching, everything's all set up as normal. Now, we're incredibly lucky at Stockport Homes. I have an amazing employment team. So uh, a lot of the wraparound support that uh, Fern was talking about earlier, we actually are able to, to provide that ourselves. But the government definition, the government definition for that is that uh, a young person is looking for long term work. They're getting careers advice. They're setting their goals. Uh, they've got support with CV and interview prep and that they're developing their skills in the workplace. So, it, you know, there are those really big benefits to working with a gateway because as, as Fern's saying, somebody can take that, that task away from you if that's not exactly the, the expertise that, that you have within your organization. Um, one of the things that we made sure that we did within the organization was set all of our Kickstarters up with a mentor. So they have somebody else to talk to that's not just their line manager. Um, we have been very, very blessed with the wonderful young people that we've met, but they have also as well come with some questions that we hadn't expected. So uh, so it's been great that they've been able to share that with a, a mentor and, and, and have, have all of those, those um, sort of like potential barriers overcome before they've stopped them from progressing. Um, in relation to unexpected benefits, we've had some amazing fresh ideas. It's made us think differently as an organization as well. When I actually looked at us as an organization, we've got 650 people that work for Stockport Homes. And when I looked in the age frames for um, uh, Kickstart, there's only literally 5% of our work, worked out, it's like 35, 37 people, something like that, who actually fell within those age frames. So we were really interested into why aren't we recruiting graduates? Why aren't we, uh, you know, I don't, I, I have to be honest, I'll own it now. I don't think anybody grows up thinking I wish to go into housing but you know it is an amazing career it's a brilliant place to work so um it's certainly it, it made us think differently about how we're engaging and maybe potentially where we advertise our vacancies in future so so there's a lot of um there's a lot of contact that we're having with our young people as well because we're trying to learn from them too so it's been a brilliant opportunity for us and the one thing I would say is absolutely brace yourself because word will spread very quickly. You will find within your organization when it's going well, all of a sudden everybody will want a Kickstarter because we've been incredibly blessed. We've had some amazing, amazing young people that we've met. So just to kind of give you a little bit of flavor of uh, career development and opportunities. As we were saying before, not everything that we were able to offer, about 90% of the jobs that we were able to offer had a, a a potential permanent placement if the young person wanted to take it um, but not everything would so we've looked at lots of different types of progression pathways for those young people so we will be supporting them if they wish to they may not wish to stay with us so we would support them to apply for other jobs we might uh, we've been looking with one young um, lady to, to look at potential other opportunities maybe even returning to uh, education it, you can't underestimate how much the young people are really building their confidence and their skills while they're with you and they're absolutely developing those transferable skills um, and it's just an amazing opportunity for them and it's been a great opportunity for us as an organization but it's been an absolute learning curve to, to see all of the young people you know develop and, and progress from this and I think as well, their experiences of uh, a working environment are not to be underestimated, setting those norms, making sure that they understand what it is, the professional nature of communication, how they communicate with colleagues, how they communicate when they face a, a challenge or a barrier. It really is. It's, it's learning that absolutely cannot be underestimated in any way. Um, in relation to um, what's been a, a real benefit for us, but also as well is a great opportunity for young pe people, we've been able to identify talent. So there have already been a couple of young people that we've identified can go into other routes and other pathways. And other managers are saying, oh, such bodies work very well with us. We've got a job coming up maybe in about three or four months. Do you think they'd go for it? So there's always those talent and progression routes uh, that, that young people have can go on um, and just I just had to include a little snapshot of five of our Kickstarters who started earlier on this year uh, they are absolutely amazing and some of the expectations that they'd had before they'd come so Lucy was sort of like just 
really sort of a little bit nervous about what the job would look like and, and what her day to day duties would be and how she'd how she'd cope. Um, and she's doing incredibly well. She's absolutely loving it. But also as well, kind of like Cameron um, was spoken to by his line manager recently and they actually emailed through a little bit of feedback and Cameron was saying he's really come out of his comfort zone and he couldn't be happier. So I think just whatever opportunities that you've got to give, whatever kind of roles that it is that you think you might have, do not underestimate the absolute value of the young people being part of your organization and learning and developing, because it's uh, it certainly is, we've found Kickstart's been an amazing opportunity for us and absolutely an amazing opportunity for the young people. So uh, that's my email address if anybody wants to ask us about our experiences or how we've overcome some of the, the sort of like the initial challenges that we faced or any of our experiences, then please just give me a shout. I shall stop sharing now, I think. Have Thank you me. very much for that, um, Amanda. That was that was very insightful. I think it's uh, I think it was also extremely and Ian commented it on it as well, that um, it's it's nice to think about finding a role for a, for a, a, a Kickstarter that suits their skills and their personality and their characteristics rather than trying to find a role that you can shoehorn them into and see how they get on because it's so important isn't it the whole confidence building is so important you know when they go into their first role in the, in the world of work other you know giving them that confidence from the word go is uh, is is vital really okay thanks very much indeed everyone see you all again soon thank you thank you thank you, thank you so much thanks a lot thanks bye-bye